Hello, I'm Sandra Edmonds Crew. Welcome back for our final lesson on servant leadership, the deciding difference. This lesson is all about putting servant leadership into action. Some might say that servant leadership is an ideal form and putting it into action can be quite difficult. Another way of thinking about this is to examine the consequences of not valuing followers and excluding them from key decision-making roles. By listening to the individuals, you show you are approachable and in turn encourage others in your organization to be the same. By getting to know individuals, you get a clear and deep understanding of the inner workings of your organization. From this comes understanding about what needs to be fixed and what talents each individual has that can be applied to the solution. When you clearly communicate what needs to be done and by whom, you initiate collaboration by a group, which results in teamwork. The team delivers the solution and the resulting outcome is shared by the team. Establishing this type of work environment builds a workforce that is loyal to the organization and its servant leaders. Helping to transform the organization, even in small ways, into something better than what previously had existed. Implementing servant leadership requires that you stay introspective, recognize your own strengths and weaknesses. Additionally, it may be necessary to upend the traditional leadership pyramid that limits information that filters to the top. Servant leadership requires listening to everyone who serves your organization, including suppliers and customers. When put into action, servant leadership has valuable benefits for the leader, the organization, and the stakeholders and customers of the organization. So in essence, here are some actions that you can take to be a servant leader or enhance your leadership. Number one, establish the environment of your workplace by being warm and welcoming. Number two, encourage the people around you to offer their opinions, ideas, and insights. Show them you are a good listener and that they may share with you without fear of judgment or mocking. Number three, get to know individuals. Understand where they can best serve the organization. Number four, communicate clearly and avoid confusion about roles and responsibilities. And number five, be aware of what you bring to an organization and don't be afraid to change the typical business leadership paradigm. These few steps will put you on the path of powerful transformation into servant leadership. I had the privilege of interviewing the late Dr. Dorothy Height, a legendary civil rights leader. I'll close with her words about servant leadership. To move forward, we have to look at the world as it is becoming, rather than how it has been. The move from traditional leadership to servant leadership symbolizes this shift. Servant leadership recognizes that not only does no one stand alone, but it is how we relate to each other and how well we work together that will make the deciding difference. Thank you for joining me. Good luck. Go to yali.state.gov for more information and resources related to this course.